Chef Andrew here to teach you how to make a stock. We're actually going to be making a brown stock. So I have my mirepoix set up already. I have uh, chunked off three large carrots, five celery stalks, and three large onions with the skins, with the roots, nothing's peeled, um, nothing's taken away. We want all the nutrients from these vegetables. Since we're making a brown stock, I have some tomato paste as well. And then we're going to be making a something similar to a veal stock, um, but without using veal. So what we're going to be using is we're going to be using chicken legs. Um, you can also use chicken wings for this. You need something that has a lot of highly connective tissues within the meat structure itself. Chicken legs are great, chicken wings are even better. Um, but I'm going to be using five chicken legs for this. And since we're using this to make a veal stock, um, you gotta think about flavor. I don't wanna make a chicken stock, I wanna make a veal stock, so we need some beef flavor. So I have eight ounces of steak that has a lot of uh, tendons in it. Uh, that Again, all that collective tissue will help gelatinize the stock later. And then I also have four beef shanks. That's just the bone, some scraps of meat, and the marrow inside. All right, all of that is gonna flavor the stock. So the first thing we're gonna need to do I'm going to set all this aside. It's going to get your pan. And hopefully, uh, and I'm telling you this right now, make sure you have your oven preheated at 425 degrees, ready to go. You're going to need a roasting pan. You're going to take some oil and drizzle the bottom here. I'm going to make sure that's nice and coated. This just helps us later on. And then we're going to add in our vegetables. Carrots celery, onions, okay, and then we're going to add in our tomato paste, and then we're just going to give this a mix. The tomato paste adds a little bit of flavor, but also adds color to our stock later on, because we're doing a brown stock, not a white stock, so it'll be darker in color, and the tomatoes will help with that. Alright, now we'll add in our chicken. We'll just kind of layer it and put it in there. Our steaks. And then our veal bones. Oh, sorry, our beef shanks, our marrow bones. Okay, we are going to put this in the oven at 425 degrees for roughly 90 minutes. Uh, you might need to go back in there halfway through, check the bones, and maybe do some flipping and turning and some things like that, and that's fine. Alright, in 90 minutes we'll come back though, and we'll put this into a stock pot to make some stock. Alright, it's been over 90 minutes, and our... Stock prep looks pretty good. Chicken and beef have cooked. Got some nice char on some of the things. That's what we want. We don't want a lot of char, but we do want some char that will help color our stock and also flavor it. Uh, everything seems to be cooked pretty well through. Some of the fat and water has already rendered from the meat and vegetables. This is good. This will help flavor the, the stock later. So now we're just going to add this into a large pot, okay? Um, you roughly want to be about, like your meat and vegetables should cover about a third of your pot, and then the rest of the pot should just be nothing but water. So we're just gonna go ahead and add all of this into the pot. You want everything off your pan, okay? All these little bits that are stuck, you want those into your stock as well. And then before we put it in the water, uh, we're going to add a couple bay leaves. Just two should be fine. I 
And then I'm gonna add about six to 10 peppercorns. And a couple sprigs of fresh thyme. And then we'll go ahead and fill our water up until, you know, about two thirds higher than the, the meat and the vegetables are. Okay. And the water you should be using should be cold. I don't want to use a hot water. The cold water will prevent the uh, stock from becoming cloudy. If you use a hot water, you're going to get a very cloudy stock. You'll bring this up to a bare simmer and you're just going to let it simmer for six hours. All right, six to eight hours is the best for a stock like this. I'll be back when that is done. So as your stock is, is uh, simmering, uh, you're gonna start noticing that uh, you're gonna get some light colored foam that's gonna start appearing on top of your, your stock here. Um, this is scum. It's all the, all the sediment, all the things that we don't really want in our stock. So what you do is you're gonna take your ladle and you're just gonna skim the top and gather all of that up as much as you can throughout the cooking process. You can do this about two or three times during the six hours that it's simmering, but just make sure that you're simmering your broth. You're not, uh, you're not boiling it. If you're boiling it, you're gonna get a very cloudy stock. All right, uh, if it's not simmering, you're not gonna get that, that movement of the liquid that brings up all the sediments and all the impurities of the stock that we don't want. Um, the darker color bubbles that you see are actually just part of the fat. It's okay to take that out as well. Uh, we're more focused on the scum at this point. Uh, if we leave the fat in, it actually helps us in the long run once we get down to cooling the stock as the fat will harden on top of it and we just kind of take that off. It's a lot easier to take it off when it's solid than when it is a liquid form. Okay, so you're just taking off the scum. Okay, try not to get a lot of the broth, just take off the light bubbles. Do this about two or three times throughout the process. And this will ensure that you have a, a nice clear stock when you're going into your sauces. Okay, uh, try not to take any of the vegetables out. We want to leave those in there. Alright, and I'll be back once this is done simmering for the full six hours. All right, so it's been about seven, seven and a half hours since I've been uh, simmering this stock, and it's done. I'm gonna do a quick skim and get rid of all of this scum that is uh, floating around the top here, and then I'll be right back to show you how we strain this. All right, so if you work at a high, high producing restaurant, um, you're gonna have something called a steam kettle at a restaurant that allows you to uh, drain a stock from the bottom, there's a spigot. Um, since we are doing this at home or in a smaller kitchen at a restaurant, uh, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need a ladle or some kind of big container and you're gonna very carefully just begin taking the liquid out and straining it through a chinois or a fine mesh strainer here because we just want the liquid. We don't want any of the, the vegetables or the meat product that got in here. We just want the broth. Okay, and we're gonna use this stock in other videos, but this is just for brown stock. Okay, so the brown stock is just where we brown the vegetables, we brown the meat, we use a little bit of tomato paste. You know, all of that adds color. And because of all the vegetables and meat that we use, we're gonna get a nice, dark broth and in future videos you're gonna see me use this broth to make an Espan Espanol sauce which is one of the mother sauces and then we're also going to use part of the stock to make a demi gloss or demi glace it's a very rich very intense flavored stock that's been reduced 
by a lot. Um, so all the liquid's been evaporated and we still have all the intense flavor and seasonings going on. And I'm being very careful. I'm, I'm trying not to disturb the stock very much and I'm not stirring it. I'm just bringing the liquid out that I need. All right. Uh, if you want to do it fast way, you can get another chinois. It's a little bit bigger. We can line it with a cheesecloth uh, with multiple layers. You need at least like four or five layers of cheesecloth. And then you can pour it and that'll strain out a lot of the impurities and a lot of the bigger pieces. But I, I do not want to disturb the, the transparent nature of this stock because it is such a beautiful stock. If I have plenty of the stock, I'm also going to show you guys how to make a consomme. Uh, that's a little bit more intensive labor-wise, but it might be nice to see what a consomme looks like. Alright, so I've strained out quite a bit. Okay, so as you can see, I have a nice dark broth. I'm going to use a clean spoon. I don't want to mess with any of the dirty bits on that big ladle. And it's almost got a, a dark amber quality to it. And this is what we're looking for. And that is how you make a stock.